Christ is risen. Continuing the series from table to altar and back, we celebrate the resurrection with, with flowers and pussy willows and all kinds of natural depictions on an Easter cake of all things, which in our tradition we call the mazurek or royalty cookie. Yes, this was a pastry shared in the castles and the manors. Michael Shafranski is back with us to share his mother's own tradition, his grandmother's tradition, a real family that hands on from generation to generation. Now, thanks for handing it down to us today. Well, you're welcome, Father. Thank you for inviting me. I would love to show you my grandmother's tradition of a mazurik, a king's cookie. Well, this is just a basic uh, cookie recipe of flour, sugar, and butter. And you put it in a pan, in a butter pan, and you kind of use a cake spatula to kind of spread it out into the cake. It forms into the form. So then you bake this at a 350 temperature. And then once it's cool, then you could take this, kind of flip it over. And then here you just uncover it, and voila, there's your mazurek. All one piece has been cracked. Yep. <laughs> After the cake's cool, you boil condensed milk in a pot. Make sure the water is covering the can, and you boil that for three hours at a low-medium heat. Make sure always the water is covering the can, because you need that or it'll explode in the pot. Yeah, you don't want this to completely cool, because then you can have this where it doesn't all like it'll thicken up because this has to be kind of still on a warm side so when you pour it just pours all out. Once it's cool open it up and then this is the part it's all liquid gold. You just pour that all over the cake. <laughs> all that from condensed milk. Yep, you got to be careful how you pour this in. And there you go. And then this has to set for at least a day so it's thickened before you can decorate the cake. All right, we can't use this one. We have to let it set and cool and set for a day. And I'll show you the reason why if you don't mind hand me this cake, Father. There we are. That well, was set overnight. Thank you very much. Overnight, see, this is a little more firmer. It'll be a little soft to the touch when you decorate it, but it's still firmer where the other caramel things would sink into. All right, now I'm going to decorate the top of this, and I'm going to use these nuts right here. And then I have some black cherries. And we're going to kind of make kind of like daisies. They're going to replicate daisies. So what I'm going to do is take the first almond slice, kind of edge it in here so I know I'm like that's my edge where I'm going to start at and then place that right in the center and then just go around the whole cherry with all the almond slices to form the flower. one flower set. Then I'm going to outline it with pecans also, so I'll just start a little, little lining of pecans on the side here, just to break it up and then I'll start another flower on the side. You see that it's settled enough that it holds the flour and the nuts, uh, the, the almond Correct. slivers quite well. Correct. Then with this one, because the pecan's kind of close by, I kind of set again where I can like 
lay it at. And on the edge. So I don't overlap over there or there, then I lay my center for the flower and just continue with the slices. Michael's family tradition uh, adds the fact that the uh, petals are standing up and they look very much alive and vibrant and celebratory. Uh, the, another form of the tradition is laying them down flat, but this is just a wonderful adaptation of the Easter uh, royalty cookie. Trying to find the right almonds that they're all kind of almost the same size. Well, that's your attention to detail. You say that uh, your cousin makes these. Where does she live? Uh, she lives in Germany. She actually lives in Cologne, Germany, and she kind of sends me photos, and I send photos of my my mazurks, and kind of almost like a competition. <laughs> You share it online, don't you? Yes, we do. The very same day, yeah, almost. Yes. And did your mother used to do this uh, caramel the same way? Yep. There was, and it was actually we used to fight. Me, and my brother, and my siblings, we used to fight for the can because. That was like liquid gold, and we would just love to put our fingers in it and lick up everything that was left in the can. Good to the last lick. Oh. That's true. Your mother was a motivator, though, she, wasn't she? How did yeah. she get you to oh, she help her? To always make us wash the pans. She says, you know, if you want more, you're going to have to help and wash the pans. And she just, she always conned us with that. I was like, it was funny. But that's what I love about it. When I, especially when I do these things, it just comes to my memory, especially when I'm washing forms and molds, you know, and I just remember what she used to do. And Washing those forms and molds like we have here <laughs> was uh, one of your responsibilities and you got rewarded yeah. for it. For the liquid gold and the, uh, the mixers from the... The beaters, right? Yeah, the beaters yeah. from the, mm -hmm. the mixers. So again, you're using the dried cherries here. Yes, and then the sliced almonds and pecans for bordering around. And you're trying to select the ones that are whole. Yeah. So they look like a flower petal. Yep. And that contrast between the brown uh, of uh, the the skin of the petal, really, in this case, of the, of the almond, the inside whitish beige, and the darker beige of the of the caramel is just fantastic. Such natural colors, naturally uh, presented in that way. Because there are very many other um, forms that can be used very much for the decoration. Uh, sometimes walnuts are used. We'll see in another video, we'll see how the skins of, uh, or of citrus fruit peels are also used. And a little bit of a if you want to say an adaptation to in a modern situation or in somebody that might not have all this time and maybe sometimes patience are various jelly fruit candies that can be used. Uh, so this can really take off as wonderful uh, celebration, a wonderful celebration, a joyous aspect. In some of the in other preparation we've talked about the suffering of Jesus and especially in the meat preparation and the sacrifice. Here is the victory of the resurrection before us, which is particularly celebrated in Polish tradition with flowers. 
Uh, Pussy Willows is also another decoration that goes on top. All these various decorations are symbolic of something that where nature is participating in the joy of the resurrection. As a matter of fact, we have a Polish saying that a, a flower joyfully smells joyfully as a joyful aroma. Well, these cakes, these royalty cookies as we call them, these Easter cakes for the resurrection table, are one of the best examples of that, which you don't find so often uh, in communities outside of Poland, uh, unless you have very specialty bakeries, and not always done so exactly, so perfectly with such, with such love uh, and attention as Michael is doing here. It shows that uh, he really picked up something wondrous from his grandmother and mother because even the pan that you use to bake this is your mother's pan, is it not? Yes, it is. All the forms, even these, she used to make even tinier ones for us for our baskets. She would make little tiny mazurkas, and then she would make little babkas for us for our baskets. Which you took to church for blo for the blessing, obviously. Yes. And something small like that fit really, really well. Yep, yep. So she, was, she was very proud of this too. I mean, I mean, all this stuff and the linens she would have, and you know, we open it up and people be like looking in our baskets. Oh, look at that! Look at that! She had a very unique basket. Yeah. Uh, she also had unique palms that people were were actually quite amazed by. Yeah. They'd never seen before. Oh yeah. And this is an extension of that palm flower branch tradition, but on a cake. Uh, sure. This is Polish creativity. Sure. And this Polish creativity, particularly from central Poland, where your uh, Wawic, where your grandmother and mother came from, where color and flower, flowers and nature are so much a part of the national dress, True. The, the dance of the area, and the religious celebration. They're not separated. No. That's why this is a very unique moment here for our Polish-American history. And anybody who's interested in pastry and culinary art, because this is one of the most characteristic examples of Polish holiday ritual pastry, uh, which you will not find uh, to this degree, to this degree, and it was done with such care and love and preciseness and connection and bonding with the tradition as you found with Michael here. As a matter of fact, it was so great to finally find out from Michael uh, when he had prepared a simple, because you had different kinds of mazurki. Yes, I did. They, they were, my mother would make just like a plain little cookie, and they were little triangles. They were just for her card friends. They would come play cards, and she would make that. And But this is more of a fancier. Which version. was used, what, you had it all year round? Uh, the, the other ones? Yeah, they were like, you know, but treats. These here were? Not these. These were just strictly Easter. Easter was the biggest time my mother would do all the baking. The biggest baking was always for Easter time. The cookies, the babkas, all that. Was, the yeast raised babka, yeah. that, like like what you have right here. Yep. Next next to that. That's a small one, but there were bigger ones. You even told me the story that your mother had the three-tiered babka. Yeah, she had three tiers that would stand up really high and all this icing just dribbling right down. It was all drizzled, the, yep. the glaze and icing. See, that's a sign of the bounty of the Polish feast. And the table, which is after 40 days of Lent, where you really didn't indulge in anything much at all. No, nope. Uh, especially either sweets or something that was very uh, a fatty or something you enjoyed, pleasurable, let's that's, say. That's true. When, we, when you saw this and you saw your basket prepared by your mom each and every there were what six of you in the family seven seven mm -hmm. so seven of these babki seven of these mazurki all decorated so exquisitely like in a in a european pastry shop this your mother put a lot of love oh, she, she received a lot and she always you know said it came from you know her her mother and stuff like that and came down and I'm glad to share that with you today. And Michael, you're one of the few people here in this area, in the Western New York area, or in the United States that I know that actually practices this. Because one of the ways that in modern tradition it has kind of transferred, people use frosting for all of this. So they make frosting Correct. flowers yep. and frosting decorations, even frosted uh, pussy willows, yes. okay? We go back to using nature. Here. Nature, yes. What they had at home. That's true. Everything was always what you had at home. 
And uh, this is just a, a, an actual privilege for us that you can share us a three generation old tradition that to varying degrees is not so much visible uh, in the United States, sometimes even Poland. That's true. So true. Nope. That is a magnificent presentation. Well, thank you, Father. And thank you for letting me come and share this with you. I also have another cookie I made differently. If you don't mind handing me that oh, one, and I'm going to put this one okay. over here. Ah, this one's got some writing on it. Yes, it does. Oh, it's, how beautiful. It says, Wesołego Alleluja. Which means? Happy Easter. In Polish, yes. Yeah. And what's so different about this one? I mean, special about this. Well, this one I have the eggs going around, and then I put a pussy willow in here, and that's just the start of spring, and that comes from the the first crack of thunder, is where the pussy willow. When the thunder out. hits, yes, yes, that exactly. Does. The lightning and thunder hit, then all of a sudden the pussy willow comes alive, and that is the first branch that announces Easter, right? That's it. And your mother would put that on there too? Or? Yes, they'd be all different forms. You know. So there are different ways of decorating. Oh yes, there yeah. are. Well, you showed us one which was basically all the nuts yes. with a couple cherries yeah. formed into flowers. And this one has the pussy, which is the, the, the really the heart of the Polish palm oh, yes. around which you put the flowers you've made in another video that we have uh, also showed on From Table to Altar and Back. Pussy yes. willows became the center, the heart of the palm, flowers around it, and the various colors. I consider, I don't know how you look at this, Michasz, but I consider this pastel connection is kind of making a Polish-American type. Yeah. Oh, yes. But I call your attention especially to the fact that on this cake, as on the Easter egg as well, as in the palms that you have made, another video that we showed, we have the participation of nature. That's Nature is coming alive, rising from the earth with spring, along with the resurrection of Jesus, who really, if you want to say it, incites that spiritual rebirth in us. If we've been giving up all these fancy sweet things for all of Lent, you know you're going to no, taste yeah. a, a bit of happiness. Especially that liquid cold. Ah, on top of it, yes. <laughs> yes, that's what you used to lick out of the, <laughs> the off the beaters and out of the can. That's true. This is, this is a most magnificent, really, uh, a, a opportunity for everyone there, for all of our viewers through the entire From Table to Altar and Back series to kind of at least come into contact in the various... Um, multiform ways we as Polish Americans have received our tradition from our families celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and uh, boy is this a joyful table. Well, thank you Father. Well, dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much Michael for being with us and sharing us your, with us your family's tradition which is just stunning for me. Thank you Father. Smacznego. Navzajem.